Authenticity, it, it is the most terrifying thing you will ever do. And it's gonna be the thing that you struggle with the most. Because being accepted is awesome, right? Being admired is awesome. Being loved by your peers is awesome. The greatest joy in life is to be who you truly are. And the reason I think that that really is the greatest joy in anyone's life is there's, there's such a harmony when you're being you, right? You're not fighting your instincts or your impulses or the things that make you odd or awkward. They're also the things that make you unique and interesting. And it's such an amazing thing to know that in all of human history, there's never been someone just like you. And in that uniqueness, there's something wonderful. What you will be able to offer the world is fundamentally different because you're shaped by your environment as much as you're shaped by your genetics. You're shaped by your time period as much as you're shaped by your genetics and your environment. Like all of these confluence of events come together to create something amazing. So all of those things that you think are wounds, are hurts, are things that have degraded you or chipped away at who you are, they're just the things that have made your voice more unique. They're the things that make you, you. But it means like, bring you to the table, right? When you have a view or a vision that's different, share it, believe it, trust it, voice it. And in that, the only warning I will give you is never be dogmatic. Never say foolish things like, well, that's me, you take it or leave it. Because that's somebody who doesn't have a goal. Or worse, they actually have a goal. And that goal is merely to plant a flag and say, this is who I am forever and ever, and fuck anybody who doesn't like me. That's, that's an emotional suicide mission, right? Because it's not an effective way of getting what you want out of life. But if you can avoid dogma, if you can avoid your ideas calcifying, if you can say, this is me and I'm always open to an even more interesting way of thinking or doing or going and doing experiences that change you. One thing I always tell people, books will change you, but only if you let them, right? I read a bunch of books and they changed my life. And I went from king of remedial jobs to running this company, right? The, the world of difference that that is, is, is startling because I let those books change me. Other people have read those same books and their life looks exactly the same because they didn't open themselves up to being changed. So while you should cling fiercely to your individualism, you should love the things that are weird and unique and special about you, you should also always be looking for that opportunity to grow. So asking the right questions is so fundamental and so powerful if you really want to find fulfillment in your life, ask the question, how was the worst day of my life the best thing that ever happened to me? The same events, whatever happened, happened. But now ask a different question. How was it the best thing that ever happened to me? When I was in my dark days, as I called them, back at our last company, it seemed like the worst thing that had ever happened to me. And when I started saying, how is this the best thing that ever happened? I realized that Quest was a company born of misery and how amazing that was because I was so angry. I was so frustrated. I was so hell bent to do things differently that almost out of spite, I was like, I'm going to make every day beautiful. I'm going to love what I do. Even if we fail, it's going to be fun. And those became like the building blocks, but I never would have gotten to that. I never would have gotten to that aggressive mandate. Like, but we never would have gotten there if it hadn't been miserable because we, we would have just kept going along. You get what you focus on. You get what you focus on. If you focus on fear, dread, incompetence, uh, possible danger, possible failure, then that's where your mind is. Your mind is totally consumed by those thoughts. But if on the other hand, you think about possibility, what can you, how good you can get, the amazing things that could happen, then that's what your mind is consumed by. There are two wolves in your nature. 
you're going to get more of whichever one you feed. You've got the fear wolf, you've got the courage wolf. You feed the fear wolf, you get a strong wolf, all geared towards fear. But if you feed the courage wolf, on the other hand, you get a strong wolf, all geared towards doing, being courageous. The questions that you ask yourself will determine your life. We made, in a day, in Quest, what that company makes annually by asking one different question. How can I bring value to my thousand true fans? So however successful this one was, it is dwarfed. Not only in emotional and spiritual joy, fulfillment, happiness, but just raw dollars. Once we stopped asking the question of profitability and we accepted that it had to ensue from other choices, then really excited for this happened because that is acknowledging the human experience. That's acknowledging what you need to do to really connect with you. Let yourself be impacted. Let yourself be changed. Yeah? Let yourself be changed. Like open up to really being impacted and saying right here, right now, in this moment, I'm going to let this new piece of knowledge fundamentally impact my behaviors. And so in that moment, I realized that I had this decade of focusing on why. I needed to understand for myself why I do things. And in that why, it was so powerful for me. It moved me forward and it gave me the energy that I needed to generate change in my life to really move forward. But why is the empty dream? How is the execution that makes the dream a reality? I'm not interested in being an empty dreamer. And it's fun, and I use the word empty to make it derogatory, but I love dreaming. Like, dreaming is beautiful, and dreaming will allow you to paint a compelling future for yourself, but at some point, you've got to open your eyes and then create the world that you see in your dreams. You've got to create it. It's very active. It's not going to happen by itself. What are the actionable steps that I'm going to take? They're very simple identifiable, attainable skills that you're going to need to get where you want to go. And then I will say the one universal thing that everyone needs to do, you got to get control of your own emotions. The only thing that holds you back is your mindset. There's no problem that we can't solve. Adopt that mindset. These people are no different than you. You've got to touch base with the how. You've got to find the massive action right now today that you're going to take to make those dreams come true. It's about executing on your dreams. Executing on your passion. Taking concepts and making them real. That's the way.